Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I want to take a first look at the BatGo technology which is all about having smart batteries that will store information about themselves, how they've been used and some other cool features as well. Now we actually looked at a video of a product that had the BatGo technology quite a while ago now and a couple of people went oh you've completely missed the whole point it's all about BatGo and I hadn't missed the point I was kind of waiting so I could get my hands on some batteries that were actually BatGo smart batteries you can tell that because we have an extra little cable here and we have an extra connector at the side of the XT60 and also some extra pieces like the linker here which is the little cable that you can connect your battery up to the computer to read all the data off. So let me very quickly go through what we've got here on the table and let me kind of show you what I've found. This is by no means trying to be an everything you needed to know about BatGo video but when this stuff arrived I was actually Skyping with a friend of mine and he was asking loads and loads of questions and we were kind of goofing around. So I thought you know what that's probably a worthwhile thing to go through in a video just to show you what BatGo is because I think there are two points of view with this technology. One is fixing a problem that doesn't exist, or two, that it's actually going to really help newer pilots make sure that you can keep track of the batteries and nothing untowards happens. So the bits of technology, first of all, uh, is this thing here. This is the ISDT T8 with the BatGo technology in it. We've looked at loads of ISDT stuff on the channel already. Uh, I am a, quite a big fan of ISDT. There's only one product we've had from those guys that I haven't been particularly impressed with. Let me take this film back off. Apologies, it was much better fitted when I first got it. It's because I've been playing with it and kind of wanted to show you how it arrived in the box. So there is the standard ISDT unit. So we have an input from 12 to 40 volts on one side. Uh, we have a USB cable at the other. Uh, we also have that terrible three and a half millimeter jack and then we have the output and the balance tap and all the controls in the middle. So that is a BatGo smart charger. The thing you'll notice is there's an extra little contact on the XT60 connector. In fact, if you look on it, it actually has a special name. It's called the XT60i. I'm guessing that means uh, the BatGo. And that when you plug the battery into, it'll read all of the data. So let me just power this. Uh, from one of my kind of field batteries. Uh, this is one of those cool big whopping lithium ion jobs that I tend to take to the field with me. So we'll power it from that. Big fan. And uh, there we are, we're all ready to rock and roll. Now, the other couple of things we have, uh, we have a couple of smart batteries. Again, I'll put links in the description underneath so you can have a look. Both of these are 4S. 14.8 volt uh, ATC units it reckons. Uh, both of them will charge at 5C and discharge at ATC and they are they look pretty normal with the exception of that extra wire that's going up to the XT60i connector. So let me just show you how this works. If I plug one of these little fellas in Hopefully you'll be able to see this on the camera. Come on, kind of. Uh, all of the information about the cell voltages is actually displayed in the window, even though the balance tap isn't connected. Now these BatGo batteries can be charged via a normal method, but if we look at the options on the T8 BatGo, then we've only got a handful. The real fun stuff is if you press and hold the middle button, it accesses the menu to set up the charger itself but the thing I really want to show is this BatGo section here. Now this is reading all of the information of the battery. We have things like auto storage, we have the storage voltage, charge current and other things as well. Now the auto storage on this battery is turned off but you can select anything up to 240 hours which is 10 days. Then we have the charge current and the charge voltage too. The exception record I'm guessing is showing where there have been any errors. But that's all coming from the battery itself. 
If I unplug the battery and get hold of the other one, I've actually changed the charge current on this one. Again, as you plug it in, it comes up on the screen, tells you it's a BatGo battery, and it's getting all the information just from the connector. So if I go into the BatGo information here, we can see that on this particular battery, I've set auto storage for 240 hours. So after it's been charged up, if it isn't discharged after 10 days, it'll auto discharge, which is a nice function. Not completely sure I'm overly happy with batteries doing that on their own, but nice idea. And at the bottom, we can see we have no exception records. So what we'll do then is let me plug this into the PC using the PC adapter, and we'll see what we can see on the PC app. So you can download the application and install it onto a Windows PC. First of all, I'm going to install the BatGo adapter. Again, I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in this little device. And then let's plug the battery that we've just looked at into this and see what we can see. And again, all of the data is coming down that single connection from the onboard electronics inside the battery. And here we can again see all the cells, we can see the charge current, we can see the discharge current, we can see the overall battery voltage, the number of times it's been cycled, we can see things like what the target voltage needs to be and what the charge is as well. And we can see there that that's 1300, which I reduced on the charger before I actually shut the video. And again, we have all the settings in here. So by default, the charger should be able to figure out exactly what the maximum charge current is and also whether or not you're trying to charge the battery faster than you actually can. So it's quite nice to be able to see all this data. Again, just checking the record, just like we saw on the charger itself, nothing interesting in there. So what I'll do then, just to kind of confirm that the information is editable and storable in the battery, and we'll, uh, we'll change something and then look at it back on the charger. So let me change the charge current and let's increase that a little bit. At the moment, it's 1300 milliamps or 1C. So let me just increase that. Now there isn't a save button on here or anything to write this back. So it appears to be happening instantly as I'm connecting to the battery. So now we've changed that charge current, we've increased it. Let's go and plug it back into the charger and see if we can see that change. So we'll power up the T8 again, so it's ready. And let's plug the Batgo battery back in that we've just changed the details on. And then press and hold the middle button to go into the main menu, select Batgo and have a look at what the settings are. If you bring it into the camera, there it is. We increased it to 2.6 amps on the PC, and there it is as well. So it seems like an interesting idea. I like the idea that batteries are kind of keeping track of how they are performing. It doesn't appear to be doing anything like keeping track of the internal resistance inside the battery and also the health of the battery as well. I like the fact that there's the C ratings in here it means that you cannot overcharge a battery. I personally like to charge batteries at 1C or less. They just seem to last longer if you do it that way. But maybe there's an option in future for flight controllers to support the BatGo technology and be able to read out the individual cell voltages and detail of the flight battery via an on-screen display or via telemetry back down to something like an FR Sky Radio running OpenTX. Going back to where I started the conversation, I'm still not really convinced about BatGo yet. I think it's an interesting idea. I'm not sure how I feel about having more electronics inside the battery itself and also having this auto discharge function, which although I think is a very good idea, time will tell how safe it actually is and how well it works. The couple of tests that I've done here seem to work okay, but it's too early for me to start relying on it to manage my packs. In my opinion, the thing that will hold the BatGo standard back more than anything else is at the moment it isn't an open standard. It's supported by lots and lots of people and there's lots of information all on the BatGo website about what it is and what it's all around. But until lots of other manufacturers start to get on board and adopt the standard, then it's one of those things you might end up buying lots of BatGo technology and in a couple of years time, it's a bit of an oddity and you'll just be using these batteries as standard dumb LiPo batteries. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organized into easy to use playlists. So do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject, we organize all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. 
We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.